Hey there, everybody. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Ranking the Albums today. Once again, all the way from Scotland in the co-captain's chair, Mr. Stephen Reed. What's happening? Oh, well, I'm excited to be talking about a band that really means quite a lot to me. Uh, Riverside, all the way from Poland. Uh, as you've said yourself previously, prog rock and prog metal masters. Uh, yeah, I've been with Riverside from the start. I'm looking forward to this and expect, I think, in a pleasant way, I think we'll probably, I don't know what your list is, you know what my list is, I think they could be quite different. I think the opinions below for people who are passionate about this band will be quite varied because this catalogue is remarkably strong and it's remarkably consistent. This band do not muck around. So yeah, Riverside is what we're talking about. Great band and I'm very much looking forward to this. Yeah, uh, I will reiterate that. So seven albums here, studio full-length studio albums, they got EPs and all sorts of other stuff. Uh, there is not not a clunker in this entire discography and i would argue that any of these could be a number one or number two pick and uh i found this extremely hard because every album is so good um it, it's tough and, and then you whatever winds up at the bottom you feel really bad about because yep. in no way shape or form are any of these albums weak and my number seven i love almost just as much as my number one that's how there is a, the thinnest of thin lines between each of these albums. So, you know what? I, at some point, it's just like, who gives a shit what, how we rank them? The important thing is we're talking about them. If you've never listened to this band, go out immediately and honestly, go get any of them. Go check out any of them. You know, obviously, you're going to probably want to lean towards our top two or three, uh, but... I just as soon recommend my number seven as I would my number two and three. It's, it's, it's that good. It's that good. So without, without any further ado, uh, I'll have Stephen kick us off with his number seven. Yeah, I completely agree with that, Peter. So the fact that this is number seven, the fact that Band's third album, Rapid Eye Movement from 2007, is my number seven, is no less of an endorsement of this album than any of the others that we're going to talk about here. For anyone that doesn't know Riverside, I would suggest that if you're in a jolly jeeping mood uh, and you know you want to have a party and you want to go and listen to something in the summer because the weather's good and there's a pool somewhere, put all of these to the side, <laughs> put them all away, do you know, and save it for those cold, dark, intense nights when you've got time alone and the headphones are your friends and then every one of these albums will absolutely come alive do you know this is marius, not party music. this is not party music no, man <laughs> no this is not party music marius duda who we did uh, a show about pro vocalists just the other day and he he made an honorable mention for me he's one of my favorites he can do really aggressive pro metal kind of screams and, and howls and yelps not a growler in any shape or form but when he brings it right down and gives those lush tones the full focus Oh man, what, what a singer. And live, as I'll cover a little bit later on, what a band. I've seen them four times. That's not enough, is a simple answer to that. It's not enough. So anyway, this is this is my number seven. This is Rapid Eye Movement from 2007. This is album number three. It was the third album and the final part of their Reality Dream trilogy. And there's EPs and things that kind of lock in and out of that as well. Um, and as I say, this is, this is coming bottom but O2 Panic Room may actually be my favourite Riverside song. So that tells you how strong this, this catalogue is. It's another deep, intense, it's all deep and intense. Do you know, there's, there's a lot of variety in the catalogue, but it's all deep and intense. It doesn't matter if they're hammering you with a massive riff or soothing you along with something that's beautiful and keyboard based. It's all deep, dark and intense. And it comes from the heart, I think. This is not music that, that, that mucks around. Um, I don't know if there's maybe just a few less highs and lows for me on this album um, in that sense and, and, and maybe just doesn't isn't quite as dynamic as some in the catalogue um, but with, uh, with things like Lucid Dream number four on here as well lots and lots to recommend on, on here I have to say a, a two disc effort that just is sumptuous and, and beautiful in packaging and in substance it's a great album but it's still my number seven Peter. And that the artwork on those first couple albums are outstanding. I mean, most of the catalog actually. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah, it's funny. I think uh, you know, back back when this band was first coming out, their first couple albums, you know, 
all of us, a lot of us journalists were because that's just what we do. Because if you want people to understand what it is they're going to hear from some of these bands, you know, we would throw out like Porcupine Tree and Opeth and Pink Floyd and maybe a couple other bands. And yeah, but not right. Right. I mean, yeah, yeah. I was guilty of it too. Yeah, absolutely. I, I was liking them to those bands at the very start as well. And you quickly learn that they sound like Riverside. Right. And now we're like comparing other newer bands to, yeah. you know, it's like, oh, they, they do like this Riverside thing. So now all of a sudden that's become like a thing. Right. So, uh, yeah, I have a feeling our rankings can be completely different. And I think that's, that's I, a good I thing. That I, think that's, I think that's a good thing because of the band. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with um, their 2015 release, Love, Fear and the Time Machine, uh, which is their last album with their late guitarist, uh, Peter Krudzinski. Um, you know, who I think, you know, you hear when you talk about rock bands and things like that, and when you talk about like certain bands, you can tell don't really like each other much and they, it's a, a business. And I, you know, like Steven, I've seen them live and uh, I saw them in Nearfest and got to chat with them and whatnot. And you always got the impression with this band that they were really tight knit little family. And, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about when we talk about the, the most recent album, but, you know, I think once when he died, uh, he's their uh, amazing guitar player, mm -hmm. creator of great riffs and a very tasty lead player. Uh, I think kind of the spark was lifted from this band a little bit for a few years. Um, but this is the last album with him. Uh, this is a, probably their least heavy album, I would say, or close to it. Uh, a lot of the metallic sheen of a lot of the other albums or not sheen but the, the the more metal side of their repertoire not much on this album there are some heavier songs but this is like more like a, a, a prog album uh, and a hard rock album um but there's some really great great tracks on here i mean uh under the pillow good crunchy song really engaging uh lost is a beautiful track uh, i like the quirky prog mixed with a little bit of pop of uh, addicted uh, Saturate Me is good, lively, you know, progressive rock. Um, Towards the Blue Horizon throws, I mean, these guys also do the space rock thing when, when they want to. I mean, there's like a Hawkwind element in some aspects of their music. And I think Towards the Blue Horizon is a great, great track that shows off their instrumental abilities and that, that ability to create this kind of like real spacey uh, atmospheres and things. Uh, Discard Your Fear is kind of dark, but yet really catchy. Um, I, I feel terrible that this is sitting at the bottom of my list because this is a really, really strong album. But like I said, you got to put it somewhere. And uh, if you wanted to start here, I would say go for it. It's not a bad album, uh, but you got to rank them, right? So it's, there you have it. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel very much the same about my number six. At, at number six, I've put Wasteland. Okay. So this is the most recent album. This is from 2018. There's a small and quite worried part of me that can't help but wonder if we'll hear much from them again. Yeah. Do you know, so since Piotr Grudzinski died, excuse my pronunciation, yes, I mean, this has come out, Wasteland has come out, and it is an excellent album. Uh, same again, it's not quite as mellow as Love, Fear and the Time Machine, but it, understandably so, is remarkably emotionally driven. And that really... Uh, for the, I don't know. I'll tell the story now. I was going to tell it actually after the Love Fear and, and the Time Machine album where I rank that. But I saw them on the Love Fear and Time Machine tour in 2017. And they were out with guitarists. And I apologise because my pronunciation here is going to be terrible. But Macy Edge Meller, who plays a little bit on this album, but they are mainly a three piece uh, with Marius handling the guitars. And I can hand on heart tell you that I've not experienced a, a show like it. It was heart wrenching. The band put it all out there, both in what they played, how they played it, the way they interacted with the audience. There was no support act that night. Um, the emotional outpouring, if they were doing that every night. Oh, do you know, I was there with, with my eldest daughter and at the end of the show, we both just kind of turned and didn't quite know what to say to each other, do you know? And as, uh, as we were on our, our way home, it was one of those shows, and for a variety of different reasons, you sometimes say this, but it's one of those shows where you think, I've been at something tonight yeah. that will that will never leave me. Especially, you know? yeah. I can remember most things or shows about most things about most shows I've been at, excuse me. But about that show, I can remember 
so much, but the feeling, the intensity that I was left with, as you say, tight, beyond tight, I think, uh, they did question whether they would continue. Um, and I still question whether they will. However, let, let's bring it back in. A fantastic band, uh, Wasteland. I feel bad putting it at number six. I don't put it at number six because it's the one without the four of them on it. I put it there just because that, that's where it happens to fall in my ranking. And myself and Peter were chatting before. As happens with albums, they get kind of lost along the way in your collection. And I only realised when we came to do this, I had heard this, listened to it a lot, but I didn't own a physical copy. So Same I went to buy one. Um, and I was very fortunate that I seemed to find one of the brand new, anyway, last copies of the limited edition with the acoustic EP on it, which is really quite special as well. It has one of those annoying things, Peter. Okay. You see how I'm holding this and it's slightly here. Yeah. Now, there's a reason for that, and that's because if I push it all the way in, I'll never get it back out again. <laughs> I, I have some of those. <laughs> oh, I mean, Hell is the one, the band Hell, is the one that sticks in my mind because the slipcase actually sits separate, because otherwise I'll never be able to listen to that CD ever again. And yeah. this is another where this box, once I've finished doing this, will come off and never go back on. This will never go back on now, because otherwise I'll never be able to actually hear the bloody thing that's inside it. <laughs> uh, it's a beautiful package and it's really well put together and the artwork is just yeah. stunning. But all I want to do is be able to take the CD case in and out without ripping it. That's all I want. That's all I'm asking for. It's not much. <laughs> that's all I'm asking for. But anyway, you know, and it's a beautiful three disc set with the EP and a DVD and all these various things. So lots to recommend about the newest album, as well as the music, Veil of Tears, which really flows quite beautifully. I think that Duda's vocals are just remarkable on this album. I can recommend really anything that he does. Lunatic Soul is fantastic as well. Um, the band that he does outside of Riverside. Um, as I say, recorded largely as a three piece. It's an interesting album that sounds inherently like Riverside, while I still think feeling slightly remote, but not in a bad way from, from the other albums that they've had. Wasteland itself, it's a two-part song that's a kind of fight for survival and struggle, and it's hard not to intentionally or not draw comparisons with what the band had been through. So maybe I can't necessarily separate that album from what I believe are the experiences, and I may be doing them a disservice there, I don't know. But it's still a remarkable album that I absolutely love. So that's my number six, is Wasteland. Yeah, keep it out because that's my number six as well. Uh, I, I fell into the same thing. I, you know, we reviewed this album, heard it tons of times, have it on digital, ne never bought it on CD until I literally right before we started taping, I'm like looking at my stack of CDs. I'm like, how, I don't have that. How did that happen? So I'm going to have to go out and order it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I feel really bad that it sits at number six. Uh, it's, it's quite good. It is a little bit different. Um, I think like from a riff perspective, uh, they're able to make do without uh, Pieter's uh, presence. And I think, so you don't really miss much in that department. However, he was such a great lead player. Uh, you do miss that, even though there are some guest soloists on the album, which is great, but uh, he was a, a very underrated guitar player. And I think you can really feel the melancholy and the, the, the sadness and the loss um, throughout the entire album. This is not, it's not a happy album by any means, uh, but it's, but it sounds like you can, I say that, but yet you also feel the band wanting to take those baby steps to kind of continue on with their lives. Whether we hear another Riverside album or not, I don't know, because quite frankly, you know, Marius's other act, he's doing pretty well with that and people are really into that. So you have to wonder what the future lies for Riverside. I don't really know at this point, but, uh, but this is a really good album. Um, it's, you know, it, it's, it's heavy in spots. It's definitely very melancholy uh, as to be expected, but there's some, you know, great vocals on this album. He's such a good singer. Uh, Acid Rain, moody, heavy, uh, Veil of Tears is fantastic. Fantastic song. Uh, Guardian Angel, another really strong one. Lament. Uh, the struggle for survival. I don't know. It's just a very well done album. Um, yeah, you can put it anywhere. You know, I could say tomorrow it's my favorite. It's uh, it's it's really really good. Um, but you feel it's like you feel like you're with the guys and you feel the loss of their close friend and bandmate. And it's like uh, you know one of the you know I mean I got a million million CDs and albums and things and uh, I don't know if I've ever heard 
a record that a band put out after they lost one of their close, you know, founding members that had that, that we feel the impact as much, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, like the, the whole album conveys this tragedy and this loss and they did so, you know, that they made it so successful, even though it's such a heavy, sad thing that they went through is pretty remarkable. I think, I guess I'm, I'm even having a hard time, like kind of putting into words, like how to describe this album. Uh, and, and, but I don't want it to sound like this is a downer of an album because it really isn't. No, uh, but you, you feel, you know, you can almost say this is a concept album about, you know, loss of a loved one. But in this instance, that actually was, was what happened. Right. I think yeah. not since um, I'm, I'm trying to think, uh, Oh God, I'm going to forget the name of the band now. Um, progressive metal band, the lead singer, current lead singer from Iced Earth, the band he used to be with, uh, Stu Block's band. Um, I'm drawing up complete blank. Anyway, they put out a similar album like a decade ago where like three of the band members lost uh, family members to cancer like all at the same time. And they put out an album afterwards that totally was a concept album dealing with that whole situation. And that's very similar to this. Um, and you don't see this too often. And uh, I think, you know, they knocked it out of the park here. So anyway. Oops. Yeah, I think with Riverside, I think musically and lyrically, and def definitely in the, the mood of what they create, I think they're remarkably honest and remarkably brave. And I think even the, the albums that you maybe don't relate to a specific event, have that about them Do you know you, you never feel like they're just telling you a story that yeah. you know it's just an, an inspired lyric that came from a new story or something like that you always feel it's very personal uh, i think you always i've always been able to kind of relate to to the honesty of, of yeah. what they do the starkness of how it can be presented and i think that as i say the live experience that i had with the band after the, the love fear and the time machine album which is actually my my number six um uh sorry in my where my Right, right with number six. I'm a bit lost here, Peter. Number five. Number five. Um, I felt that when, when I, I saw them live, and I think that the Wasteland album, I think inherently just continues that on. Do they need to do that? I think maybe they do because it's who they are, it's what they are, it's how, how they, they, they relate. Still very brave. It would have been easy, I think, to record a lot of that and just decide it was maybe too personal to even put it out there. Do you know? Uh, um, and that's a remarkable thing to be able to to listen to. It has to be said, and and I'm very. We both ranked it quite low in inverted commas, um, but it's not low at all. It has to be said. Right. So there you go. Anyway, my number five, excuse me, is Love, Fear, and the Time Machine. So this is the album that came before, and yeah, I'm going to echo what you said, Peter. This is an excellent album, uh, but it's maybe a little mellower. Uh, it maybe lacks for some of the bite that, that's elsewhere in the catalogue, but it is a beautiful album to put on and kind of lose yourself in. And any album that's got a song that's called Lost, Why Should I Be Frightened by a Hat, has to have something going for it, really, do you know? Uh, but it's also a great song, and it's something that they, they played live a lot. Uh, Saturate Me is another one that really just pulls you in, makes you kind of live and breathe what, what, what they're doing. Uh, and, yeah, as I, say, I mean, we're both saying the same thing over and over. I'm not going to repeat myself. These are all really strong. This is my number five, Love Good in a Time Machine, and the T-shirt that goes with it. There you go. Uh, Into Eternity was the band I was thinking of before. Ah, uh, yes, yeah. Um, all right, my number five. Uh, I, these are so tough. Uh, I, you know, when I when I was sitting down, get ready to start doing this, I figured, oh, this one's definitely going to be near near the top, and it could be. I don't know. Uh, out of myself, the debut at number five. Fantastic album. I mean, this is their their big debut on the Laser's Edge. So they, they debuted on the Laser's Edge before they moved over to Inside Out. I remember Ken Golden was ecstatic, you know, when he was putting this thing out. And I remember the first time I heard this album, I was like, holy cow, I love this, right? Um, this is part one of the Reality Dream trilogy, uh, opens up with the big, dark, epic, The Same River. I mean, I remember the, fir the first time I played this and I heard that first song, I'm like, where did these guys come from? This is awesome. Um, you know, spacey synths and great rhythms. I mean, you know, you got Jacek Mel Melnicki on keyboards, really great player, uh, Piotr, and how do they say? I know it's Peter, but the Polish say it a little bit different. Piotr? 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 Something like that, yeah. Uh, the Polish band knows better. 
Yeah, great guitar solos from him on this. Uh, the title track has a little bit of that porcupine tree feel. Um, Mr. Duda sounds fantastic on this album. Uh, I believe has got more acoustic tones. Reality Dream is really good, chunky, progressive metal. Um, Loose Heart, I mean, Reality Dream. I love the, the instrumental Reality Dream parts two and three. So yep. good. Uh, I mean, you know, these guys could do like that kind of dream theory thing when they wanted to, you know, from an instrumental perspective. Uh, and then the Curtain Falls, which is just absolutely haunting. It's got those lush like pink floyd kind of atmospheric things going on just a great great debut could rank higher i got it at number five today but like i said all these albums are great so and almost like it doesn't really matter where it is but it's just uh, it's fantastic if you if, i would say if you're new to riverside start there start at the last one I, whatever it doesn't really matter start in the middle shit whatever it's there's <laughs> Well, I definitely think that you have been copying my homework because I think you've almost just said word for word what I've said about my number four, which is out of myself. Yeah, the 2003 debut from the album. Yeah, there's maybe a little bit more of the Floydisms and Porcupine Tree-isms on here, but this is a fully realised band right from the off, do you know? And, and as albums do, they take you back to times and stories. And I remember myself and a friend getting in the car for, for a journey that was going to take us somewhere for hours, we would be there for a while and come back for hours. And I picked this up and said, you know, will we take the first, will we take the Riverside album? Because it was the Riverside album at that stage. And he was, oh yeah, that'll be great. I said, what else do you want? He says, no, that'll do. <laughs> that'll do, we'll just have that over and over and over, all the way and all the way back. And that's exactly what we did. Uh, and it stayed with me ever since then. It's such a strong album, such a good album. Yeah, Reality Dream, one, two, three. Oh. The level of musicianship that's going on there, but the cleverness of the composition that's going on there, the tightness of it all, but there's also a looseness to what they do. They're such an organic band, you know, and even when they're angry and shouty, it's never contrived. It's never just for the sake of showing you a counterpoint that we can do something different. And right from the off, they were a band that were capable of doing that. And as debuts go, this, this is quite remarkable. So out of myself is my, my number four. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's, uh, I think that looseness you're talking, it's like their, their willingness to go into those kind of space rock realms, I think is what kind of, it adds a really interesting element to their music, which you don't really hear a lot of in, in bands of this nature, which is pretty cool. So, all right, my number four, uh, 2007's Rapid Eye Movement, uh, the third in the trilogy of the Reality Dream trilogy. Um, I like this a lot. I love the, I love the artwork. Um, Beyond the Eyelids is nice and heavy, really moody. Uh, I, you know, you gotta like moody music to like these guys. That's <laughs> what do. it comes down to, right? Uh, Rainbow Box, uh, there's a lot of groove on this album, I think more so than some of the other ones. Rainbow Box, Panic Room also, just there's hooks there, but the, the, the bass, I mean, Marius is a really good bass player too. And between him and the drummer, you know, there's, there's great grooves on this whole album. There's synths where you need them, uh, Schizophrenic Prayer, good chilling song um you know you got i love the dark prog mixed with the metal elements on uh parasomnia which is a great great track ultimate trip is a good big epic thing i don't know man i just um a lot of space rock on here it's really moody there's, there's some gothic elements there's metal on here there's prog on here there's pop on here it's kind of a little bit of everything just absolute gem of an album as is basically every album here yeah i know we're being uh, feels like we're being a bit sycophantic here, but Riverside are that good. I mean, and they have a really dedicated fan base in a way that a band only can if they're that consistently good, do you know? And, and you never kind of hear, we may below, let's find out, but you'd never really hear people going, yeah, but they were great then, they're not great now, or they're, they're great now, but oh, that middle what you did was just rubbish. There's none of that. The consistency is just remarkable. And when you see them live, they delve in and out of the catalogue from the start to the new, they don't seem to favour one album. They don't have an album where it says, well, that was the one, Do you know? And they can change the set list. They can revive old songs. So much going for this band. There, there, there really is. So for me, number three is, and I do love the artwork here. I don't know if it's going to come across on, on the screen. This is Shrine of New Generation Slaves. So yeah, you know, we're doing a bit of politics too here as well, to be fair, Do you know? Uh, 2013. Beautiful packaging, beautiful artwork, if you like that sort of thing as well. There's lots to love with Riverside too. Just the whole thing is is to die for. Uh, and it's such a great album. It seemed to maybe 
herald that, that kind of move into maybe slightly more groove, slightly more mellow. I think this is the, the real kind of point where it all just kind of sways and flows together just almost perfectly. Um, and I mean, I've written down and I've done it already, but it's worth highlighting just what a talent Duda is. Do you know, he's the band main songwriter. He's also got Lunatic Soul. Uh, he's got a solo album out, which I've heard, not had a real chance of a proper listen to, um, which has only just come out. He does a variety of different things. He's just such a great singer. See him live, what a bassist. You don't realise how much of the music that his bass work carries, and I use that word, you know, uh, advisedly. I don't mean he's carrying the music, but it's so integral to what's going on until maybe you see them and the way that he plays and, and the groove that's there that underpins everything. I mean, this is sometimes mood music, it's smooth music, it's flowing, it's soundscapes, as one of their own albums uh, title alludes to. But he introduces a real groove and, and, a, and a drive to, to music that you wouldn't necessarily think should have that element to it. But I mean, everything here, but Escalator Shrine, that's, you know, that, that, that's the epic on the album. It's moody and it's brooding and it's expansive. We got used to us, which is melancholy and deep, but you can use those two words for most of what the band do, to be fair. As you see, you, you got to kind of like, you know, not necessarily cheerful music to love Riverside the way that, that, that we seem to do. Uh, celebrity Touch, uh, the atmosphere in that song is, is just outstanding. Um, and yeah, I'm raving about Duda, but the whole band are, are just superb throughout, it has to be said. So that, that's my number three. My number three as well. Yep. Really great album. I, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's funny, you know, when you revisit, the, cause I will, I will admit, uh, as much as I really like these guys, I haven't listened to them a ton over the last couple of years. Um, I went through a period from like <clears throat> when the debut came out. So probably like right around the time where, where Pietro died, um, or I was, I mean, if you, if you go back, if, if, if anybody's interested in, in this, uh, if you go on to like see a tranquility, the web zine, and you look at our, uh, end of the year, uh, best of best releases of the year lists each and every year, every year that these guys put out an album. If you look at my list each and every year, it's a top 10 album. Or, it, or even higher. I don't know if it was ever a number one, but it's, it definitely was top 10 and ranked quite up there. So, I mean, these guys were like a major part of most of the 2000s for me. I mean, it just seems like every time they put out a new album, I listen to it all year. I like, like I said, I've seen them live and just really, really good. Um, I wasn't quite sure when I sat down to do this that this was going to rank as high as it did. But, you know, when I revisited all these albums, as we have to do, I was surprised. I think this one holds up so well and it's just really good. And I think this, this album and the, and I think the one I'm going to talk about next are more of their hard rock albums. There is a deep purple element uh, and it's mostly because there's a lot of Hammond organ on this album and the one I'm going to talk about next, which I know you're going to talk about pretty soon too as well. Uh, more so than all the spacey synths, it's replaced by this really hard charging Hammond organ sound, which gives the music a little more of like a classic 70s, early 80s hard rock style, which is pretty welcome for me. And again, it adds more variety to this catalog. So uh, this is their fifth album, New Generation Slave, big, punchy, hard rocking. Um, again, the big riffs matching up with the Hammond organ. It's a winning combination as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the depth of self delusions kind of brings that space in this, which they're known for. Uh, Celebrity Touch is like a long lost Deep Purple track, right? Yep. It's, like, it's just such a great <laughs> song. Uh, we Got Used to Us is for those Porcupine Tree fans, I think. Um, it's that kind of like melancholy, kind of spacey, poppy prog type of thing. Uh, Feel Like Falling is more on the metal side. Uh, Deprived is moody and melodic. Uh, you got Escalator Shrine, I think is an amazing epic track that just takes the listener through all these twists and turns through all sorts of different styles and whatnot. Uh, it's one of their better longer tracks and they got a lot of really good ones, but it's one of my favorites. I mean, this is a stunning, stunning album, I think. I don't know what else to say about it. It's, it's that good as is most of this catalog. I, I feel like a broken record here, but these albums are just outstanding. Every yeah. one of them. Every one of them. Yeah. That's the difficulty is actually finding different things to say about them because, do you know, usually, I mean, I've said this before, but when you come to do these lists, it's usually pretty obvious before you start, even if we agree or if we don't, on a personal level, you have a least favourite. Yeah. Or a, a couple that you kind of, ah, they've never really done it for me. 
and you usually have one or two you think you know what they're going to be up there and I must admit that I as I always do when we come to do one of these shows I just start at the start of the catalogue and I listen all the way through I take it in the order that they were released I don't kind of pull out and say well that's the one I listen to most or whatever it may be I just go through and this is just so stupidly difficult I don't know so, about you I mean you make you make a good point I don't know about you but Yes, in most cases, when I sit down to do one of these, I, I usually already know what my favorite's going to be, what the top two and the bottom was. It's all it's all the middle ones that I usually struggle with. I sat down to do this, and I'm like, I don't have a fucking clue how this is yeah. going to happen, right? Yeah. And that, yeah. that does not happen that often. No, it does you know, not. I, I must have no idea. Yeah. I, I, I mean, shuffle the list so many times, and I'm like, this is impossible. Yeah. Impossible. I, I genuinely, when I started this, was as interested as anybody will be to find out what my list was, <laughs> do you know? Because I'd really come into it with absolutely no preconceived idea of, well, do you know what? This won't take too long because that's brilliant, that's brilliant, that's not so good, that's not so good, that one leaves me three others to think about. Do you know, it really was just a case of, right, I'm gonna have to really put some serious time aside and go reacquaint myself with albums that I already know really well. <laughs> yeah. You know? It'll just come uh, up in the air and however they yeah. land, that's all just put on the blind side. Here we go. There's number one. All right, so, done. So so in that spirit, my number two is Second Life Syndrome. Okay. So this is 2005. This is the, the, the band's second album. I mean, the, the, the debut was immense. I mean, I told the story about how much we listened to that album and I still think the growth between there and here it's quite outstanding. It really is. And the combination between Krasinski and keyboard player Mikhail Lepage, or Lepa, however you pronounce his name, excuse me, they're the glue that hold this band together. Duda is maybe the, the, the ringleader in many ways. He's the focal point. He's definitely the, the spokesman of the band for the majority of the time that, they, that they've been on the go. They're definitely the glue. They're definitely the driving force. And that really comes across I think on, on, on this album in such a way, the title track and Conceiving You, Reality Dream 3, oh, they're just phenomenal, great, you know, dynamics and, and the arrangements are fantastic, the mood and the flow, live, this music is just phenomenal. But I mean, you've got Vault Face on here, you've got I Turned You Down, Artificial Smile, yeah, I'm just sounding like a fanboy. Maybe it's because I'm a fanboy, I don't know, but it's... You know, it's That's so amazing. good. Yep. It's Nothing so wrong good. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. It's such a good album. And I, I'm still got something to come. So there you go. Second Life Syndrome is my number two. Well, Anno Domini High Definition from 2009, right? And we know where it's coming on yours. Uh, yeah, I mean, this, this is great. Could have been my number one. I struggle with the top three big time. The, but this to me is like the com the companion album to this one, because I think this also is that big Hammond organ album from them. Uh, it's heavy, it's intense, yeah. still melodic, the hooks all over the place though, which is really great. Um, I mean, this is just a perfect example. And what I like, only five tracks on here. Yeah, a couple of the tunes are pretty lengthy, but this is how you put together a dark, spacey, heavy, yet ultimately hook laden, yeah prog rock or metal album whatever the hell you want to call it this is i may have something ranked higher than this but this is i think the template for everything this band does so well because again it sits right in the bat in the middle of their catalog and by here it's like all right we've heard where they've come from here we get a glimpse of where they're going so it's kind of like the best of both worlds this is almost like rush's uh moving pictures in a weird way right kind of right in the middle of the catalog there um Man, so many good songs on here. Driven to Destruction, Rocks, that Hammond organ, that guitar. It's like it's like Deep Purple from Poland, man. It's crazy. Um, what else we got here? Uh, hyperactive. Amazing. Intense. Um, the vocals from Duda are just amazing on here. Egoist, Hedonist. Crushing track. And then in the middle, they go into all these little jazzy and proggy noodlings and stuff. It's like, where'd that come from? Right. Uh, left out is like space rock. You know, it's just, uh, and then, then you got uh, hybrid times, which is like this weird head on collision of like deep purple, Opeth, and dream theater. Yeah, go, go figure. Right. Anyway, go listen to it. I'm not going to talk any more about it because I know you want to have some things to say. This is really great. Could have been my number one, but man, I, you know, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's my number one. Um, yeah, I, this was the album where I think they just, they just threw it all out there, you know? As you say, they'd taken everything from the first three albums uh, and they incorporated it in here, but they had so much more 
this is a heavy album. If, if you think you know that what we've described so far has been moody and melancholic, which it is, and, that, and it's not. If you think you know what, I, I don't think that's where I would you know get off. Start here, start with Anno Domini, high definition, because it offers you all of that, but it offers you an aggression. And as you say, there's a real 70s rock feel in there. There's, there's organ in there that drives songs on. There's a real potency here. And it, it's a band that are just firing on everything that they've got. You know, there's a confidence here, I think, maybe, that just underpins it all. And, and I mean, how can I name any more that, that, that you haven't? But left out, it, it's a song that kind of darts here and there and everywhere. And they, they're not really worried about you know, does this work here? Does it happen there? It just bangs through and, and just comes together. Hyperactive, just such a variety on that song in itself where the mood flows and changes and it's just so real and just so honest. Egoist, hedonist, which is awful to say, but fantastic to listen to. It is just phenomenal. And yeah, I, I, I actually found this almost abrasive when it first came out. Do you know, and it took me just a couple of listens before it went, and off we went, and it's just fantastic. So yeah, I think with all Riverside music, if you've never heard them before, I think there is an instantness there that you wouldn't necessarily understand from what we've maybe said. It feels like you'd need to take weeks to get into all this stuff. You really don't because there are hooks and choruses and be beautiful melodies, but they just don't present them in the way that you know so many bands feel feel they want to. Um, and this to me is fantastic. This is all fantastic. So I'll let you take away your number one. Yeah, uh, Second Life Syndrome, second album. Uh, fantastic, fantastic. So I want to make a point here. So we've gushed on and on about this catalog. And for those of you who are not familiar with Sea of Tranquility, the web zine, we rank all of our albums there from zero to five. Zero being absolute dog shit, uh, five being just perfection, right? Uh, I went and looked earlier today. So we have, I think we have the entire catalog ranked on or, or rated on the website by various people, both of us and, you know, Murat Batmaz and all, all these former Sea of Tranquility writers. I don't think any Riverside album has been rated less than four and a half out of five stars or less. Almost every single one has been 4.5 or five stars. Every single one of them. That is what I'm talking about here. Uh, this, these are out, all outstanding releases. There's no 3.5. There's no fours, right? I mean, think about it. Would you, would you rank any of these albums four or less? That's incredible, Peter. Isn't it absolutely incredible? Because I think, I mean, I know from being part of the web scene for so long, I would like to think I'm remarkably honest about what I review and what I rate. I know that you are. I know that the rest of the team have been, and if I don't like something, I'm going to tell you I don't like something. A lot, I know a lot of people out there, not just about us, but reviewers in general, there's an awful lot of talk about them going, oh, do you know they like everything? I mean, Martin Popov often says that, you know, you've you got to keep it honest because you can't like everything and you can't like everything. Yeah. And there's people that say, oh, these guys are all bought, you know, there's, there's sponsors on their site and all. There's never been any pressure on Sea Tranquility to say anything other than the shit that's in my head, do you know? Mm -hmm. And that's all that I'm ever asked to, to put down there, whether it's a hundred words or pfft, one of the ones that people open up and go, really? Do you know? And it's, yeah, I mean, for, for the people that I know and respect to have ranked these albums in the way that we have on that site really says an awful lot about this catalogue. And I can't stress enough, if you haven't, had the pleasure of experiencing Riverside, I would implore you to go. And even if you just go and stick the name into, into YouTube or Spotify or whatever it is that you want to go and listen to music on, don't worry about what album it is. Don't really worry about the ranking or the rating or how many hits it's had or whatever it may be. You're going to find something there that you're going to absolutely love. Yes, it's not music for all occasions, but it is music that moves you and touches you and inspires you. And it's honest and it's from the heart. And yeah, they're just a fantastic band. Yeah, yeah. So, I, you know, I don't think I need to go on and on about Second Life Syndrome. It's just, it's, and it sounds great. It's expertly produced. Um, man, Dance With The Shadows, so good. And he covers so many vocal styles on that track. Uh, uh, Volte Face, what a great song, you know, got to get, yeah great vocals in there, big riffs, Mellotron and synths and uh, 
the title track, another one of their great epics, 15 minutes. It's just so good. I love the artwork. Yeah, but you know what, gang? Uh, any of these, yeah. any of these, like Steven said, just go wherever you listen to your music and just randomly pick anything from any of these albums. Uh, and, you know, I'll just throw out there, too, if, if you're anybody's interested in going out and buying a lot of this stuff, uh, Voices in My Head and Memories in My Head are two of the EPs. They're pretty cool, too. They're like you know, 25, 30 minutes long, but well worth checking out to get some live stuff. They got some live things, all sorts of stuff in this catalog to check out. Um, well worth it. They should still be easy to find because, I mean, they're all on Inside Out. Well, look what, look what I found out with the uh, with the Frost catalog. So maybe not. I don't know. I shouldn't say that because um, thing, things go out of print pretty quickly nowadays in the world of cd bills. Yeah. As I say, the difficulty I had in finding the impossible to get from its case version of Wasteland yeah. it was really quite something I have to say. Yeah, it's, a, it's available for some hefty prices in certain places already. Uh, I ended up on a, a reputable site uh, buying that brand new, but the, that was the only place in the UK that I could still find it. And I, and I use a lot of the independents as much as I can because let's support them all we can. Uh, very difficult to find. Yep. Yep, absolutely. Get out there, get them now if you want them. Yeah, it's a good good thing. So uh, so there you have it. That, that's your homework today for folks watching who have never checked out Riverside. Well, I think you got some great recommendations here today. Just go out and check out any of the albums, get what you still can that's out there. I'm sure some of this is still available. Uh, but if you are a fan, and hopefully we have a lot of folks watching who are big into this band, curious to see how you rank these albums. Uh, remember, there's no right or wrong answers here. I think every one of them could be a number one or any one of them could be a number one. So uh you know, curious to see what everybody thinks. So I want to thank Stephen for uh, once again coming on and adding his brilliance to the proceedings here on the channel. And uh, we'll be seeing him back soon next month. Uh, we've got a couple of things we've been talking about. We, we, we've been talking about, we got to get with Simon Bray because I want to bring uh, my two favorite folks from the UK together once again to do a show on uh, the more on the more melodic rock side with FM. So uh, they're both big fans. I'm going to let them run that show. So hopefully we'll have that coming up in August. And Stephen is also going to come back to in the prog seat once again because his last appearance last week was such a success uh we got to have him back on again so stay tuned for that and all sorts of other things and make sure you visit us on the web at www.catranquility.org where he and i well more him lately than me but reviewing all sorts of stuff on the webzine uh so so check that out visit us on facebook follow us on twitter but of course most importantly we are here on youtube all the damn time. That's right. And, and if you believe that, go buy one of our All the Damn Time shirts. With the link is below to that. So for Stephen Reed, IMP Pardo, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, this fun episode of Riverside. If you haven't seen it, check out the Frost episode we posted just prior. And uh, have a good weekend. We'll see you all real soon. Take care.